This is Jeremy Tusmer with SGTV. There was a time when giants roamed the earth. I've seen one of them. 110 years ago, at the dawn of the 20th century, Ray Stanford Strong was born into a large family in Corvallis, Oregon. The grandson of a lumberman and the son of a lawyer turned farmer who had married a painter. While his dad was still in law school at Stanford, baby Ray lived through the great earthquake of 1906 that nearly destroyed San Francisco. The baby giant never even woke up, even as his crib was thrown about the room. He started painting when he was just eight years old and kept at it until he was 101. He was athletic, handsome, a gregarious and natural leader. At 19 years old, his family paid for him to travel to the big city to attend art school at today's San Francisco Art Institute, where he met Jimmy Swinnerton, one of California's preeminent desert painters. They traveled together to paint the Grand Canyon, a trip that was to put him at odds with the Art Institute's faculty, who was then training its students in the European modern tradition. So Ray left for New York to study at the Art Students League. It was in New York that he got swept up in the mural movement, assisting on his first project and in completing another. When Ray returned to the West in 1933, he was a confirmed and confident artist. He would paint one of his most famous works for the WPA the very next year. Ray's contributions to the history of Bay Area art are as giant as the artist himself. He helped found the San Francisco Art Students League. He started one of the city's first artist co-ops. He founded a mural society. He and his wife Betty lived in the heart of the arts section on Montgomery Block right around the corner from his very good friends Dorothea Lang and Maynard Dixon. Ray came to Santa Barbara in 1960 to paint a series of dioramas for the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History and to do a commission for the Santa Barbara Savings Bank. He stayed for the next 45 years, becoming the most influential artist in the history of our community. He founded the Santa Barbara Art Institute with James Armstrong. He founded Gallery 113 with Audrey Campbell. He founded the Oak Group with Arturo Teo and Erica Edwards. He was, as I said, a giant, beloved by almost everyone who ever met him. When I was still new at Sullivan Goss, now almost a decade and a half ago, giants still roamed among us. By then, Ray was confined to a wheelchair. But his intelligence, his energy, his enthusiasm for art, for the out of doors, and even for the smile of a pretty woman, were so big that I could hardly understand them. Truth be told, I still can't. This summer, the Ray Strong Project will kick up exhibitions at nearly every museum in the city. On a graphic book on Ray will follow soon after. Ray Strong. American Artist will be on view at Sullivan Goss through August 2nd. Come see it.